previous couple of videos, we've talked about selecting things by drawing out an area. Now there is another way to do it, and that's to let Photoshop do the work for you. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's come up to a magic wand tool. And then I'm gonna click on this red area here. And you can see what Photoshop has done is it said, okay, you've just clicked on a red pixel. All right, I'm gonna go off, I'm gonna find all the colors which I think are closest to that color, and I'm gonna select those as well. And you can see, it's not made a bad job of it. It's missed out some areas though, you can see. It hasn't got the, the slightly darker areas at the top of the jacket. All right, let's press Control D to deselect. Now my tolerance was set to 32. Let's try upping that to say 50. Now I'll click, and you can see it's selecting more of the actual area. Now the higher the tolerance, the more Photoshop says, okay, well that color over there is looking quite similar to the color you've just clicked on. I'll include that as well. If I do it the other way around, Control D to deselect and take the tolerance down to 10. So Photoshop is a completely intolerant little so-and-so. Click, only select a small area. You'll also notice it just selects the pixels which are in its immediate vicinity. If you want it to select every pixel in the image, every pixel in the layer, sorry, which is similar to that, come up here and click off contiguous and click there, every pixel, including some in that little scarf there of the teddy bear, which I didn't really want, get selected. So here's a halfway house on this. If I put that back to its default 32, click on contiguous, click, and then if I shift click, same as with all the other tools, shift will add to the selection. I've got most of the stuff now. Now, clicking on all these tiny little areas can become a little bit of a headache. So what I am gonna do, I'm gonna come back to my lasso tool. Remember me saying it's good for selecting large blunt areas? Well, this is what it does best. So, just drag out a huge lasso there, and it's got them. Come down here, it's got them. Now, you may think you're safe there, but if I come and zoom in, see there, we've got all these kind of bits here. That point, I would choose the lasso tool, press shift, and I just start to clean up the actual edges. Use the most suitable tool for the job, basically. And look, I'm starting to get these tiny little areas here which I probably wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't zoomed in. So you can see the magic wand, it can select things quickly but it's not perfect. You still need to come in and do the work yourself to get a really good result. Let's make that fit the screen. Come back in a little bit and I can make changes with that. Okay the magic wand tool can work. Let's press Control plus D to deselect that. Let's come to the next one. The other one in the menu, the quick selection tool. Now this one is quite fun. I've got a little kind of brush area there. And if I just start drawing it, it's like a magic wand that you move around rather than click in one place. See, and look what it did there. It's got that hand. I do not need that hand selected. Let's try pressing Alt to deselect. And I'm starting to deselect the hand. Again, it's a very fast way of working. But as before, if we zoom in on that, it's good for drawing out large areas, but it, as you can see, it still needs refining in places there. So again, I would come to either the lasso tool or the polygon lasso tool. Let's zoom right in here, see if we can't get that. Press Shift to add, and there's that area there. Press Alt to take away, there's the area there. You're letting Photoshop take its best guess now or what you want it to do it might be a little bit more accurate just to come in with say the polygonal or suit tool as before and then start clicking out the areas that you definitely know you want selected or deselected okay let's zoom out again let's come to about say here and once again control d to deselect the last selection tool is not in the side palette here it's actually up under the main menu bar select color range. All right, what's this do? See, you've got your little color dropper there, and if I click on an area here, 
See that little mini box there? That dialog box? The wider the area, the more you've selected that particular part. But you can see, if I click on OK there, I also started to select parts of the baby's head. I don't really need that. Control D to the select, come back to select color range. The fuzziness, well that works like the tolerance on using the magic wand selection. If I take the fuzziness right down low, you see you can interactively adjust it. The lower the fuzziness, the more you're telling Photoshop, well I only want pixels close in color or tone to the one I selected there. So you're getting quite a narrow range there. But one thing I can do, if I press down shift again, I can start adding to that selection and do things that way. And if I've got the fuzziness down fairly low, I can get quite an accurate. Whoops. What happened there? I clicked on that little dark area without looking. So I don't really want to do that. So I could control Z to reverse that change. And if I just keep on clicking around the various different areas, I should end up with a reasonably tight area, but because it's sampling the whole area, look, say so I've got the baby scarf, I've got these feet of this toy selected, but it's up to you, whatever you choose to use. Now, this is quite a good testing ground because there's a lot of colors there which are quite similar to the baby's sleep suit. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.